does it feel that the characters are going back to Scotland first and foremost? Does it feel like a bit of a homecoming? Totally. It's like such a full circle moment, certainly for Jamie and Ian. I mean, even for Claire, even though, you know, um, that's not necessarily where she's from Scotland. It's it's where our story started. So it's like a full circle moment. And it's been about nine or ten years since Jamie and Ian have been home, which is great. I mean, the fact that we've been shooting the show for that long kind of tells you it's kind of a a weird kind of parallel moment for all of us and um and it was really fun filming that moment and actually weirdly we filmed i was just thinking about this we filmed the moment um jamie and claire and ian come pop up um on the deck of the boat to see scotland for the first time way back in season one um because we were using the ship and we had it and we were using it to film something else so Actually, we filmed that final moment in the first block. So, oh, wow. I need to think about that. That that was one of the first things we shot. So, which is crazy, but it's it's so heartwarming and it's a lovely way to end their story um, for the first half and and kind of prepare people to come back for the second half. Absolutely, and I didn't like you were saying you've been you've been working on this show for the best part of a of a decade at this point. I mean, what have you? I guess, like, what's your biggest takeaway from this experience? And also, I'm just curious who your favorite characters are as well. Well, um, I mean, it's hard to pick a favorite character since that's like picking a favorite child. <laughs> um, listen, I mean, Jamie and Claire, it's hard not to have them as kind of your, you know, I know they are the heartbeat of the show. And certainly, you know, I think of them, you know, I always say they're kind of like the center of the wheel and all the stories spoke off of them, even though you know, if they're not the center of the story of that week, it's like everything always kind of leads back to them. Um, but it's been an amazing ride. I mean, I'm so, I have so many mixed feelings going into that last season. It's so bittersweet. It's, um, you know, obviously we knew it had to end at some point. Um, in season one, we did not imagine we'd be lucky enough to go eight seasons. But um, I'm very sad about it, but also very excited to film that last chapter and go on to new things and obviously we've got the prequel and but it's really it's it's very sad it's um been such a wonderful ride it's this show is my heart i you know i've been on it since day one and i just love it i love the people i love the story i just love everything about it it's been such a wonderful experience I mean, yeah, I, I've been a fan since um, since season one myself, so it is just like it's amazing to see how how long it's gone and how it really keeps the fan base engaged as well. I mean, it's got such a passionate fan base, both the novels and the TV show. Um, and actually, um, my colleague and I do weekly chats where we discuss them each episode, and um, it's always funny because always the YouTube comments are very passionate book readers telling us what exactly has changed that sort of thing. I mean, how do, how do you decide that? Like, how do you decide how the novels are adapted and what gets kept in and what gets tweaked? Yeah, every year, it's, I mean, every season, it's the same thing. The writers sit down, you know, they put all the temple moments on the board. You know, we kind of decide, okay, what, what has to stay, what can't fit? Because obviously, normally, we're 12 episodes. You know, this season, we're 16, but we also are this season because we didn't know going into this season if this would be our last and thought it could be our last um we kind of prepared to squeeze in all the material we had at that point um you know book nine wasn't out yet so we we were finishing up book six and we said let's take book seven and eight and just kind of if this is it let's go out with a bang and i'm so impressed with the writers that they managed to grab all the best moments of these two books and make a cohesive story. Um, you know, that's always the problem with Diana's books. They're so, um, uh, not complicated, but you know, one thing she, she's an incredible writer. So one storyline weaves into the next, it's hard to sometimes pull threads, um, and everything kind of falls apart. So, you know, I think they did a great job this season of incorporating so much material and making it so fast paced and, comprehensible and it's just a wild ride so um once again we go in and and figure out what we can include and and what has to go and it's always hard i mean you know it's always unfortunately the quiet moments or you know the yeah. like lovely little scenes you love but you can't necessarily include because you know the episodes are only so long and 
and we can only include so much stuff. So maybe bricks are this big. We don't, but the TV show has a quarter of the time to do to do those that material. So it's tough. It's just two different types of storytelling, isn't it? It's, it's you know you, you can't get all of the intricacies in there, but but yeah, it's a shame. I mean, uh, so someone someone pointed out that it's like in the book. In this episode, Janie was supposed to lose a finger. I guess was that a bit of a CGI <laughs> nightmare? We just decided, you know, certainly certain things like that, and you know, obviously, um, you know, we certainly had Jamie's hand from season one, and and carry that on in the scars. But there are certain things that are really kind of tough to do as we move forward. And losing a finger was something, yes, visual effects wise, that we just it time money. Um, you know, for the actor, also Sam, that for him to have to kind of wear then a sleeve maybe with, you know, um, it's not something we felt we wanted to burden him with. Um, I mean, I, I love that there's always, uh, when, when I'm watching each, each season, I mean, for example, last season, it was like very much murder mystery, like who killed Malba. This season for me, the intrigue is very much when Jamie is going to meet William. Yeah. <laughs> and like, that's the big thing for me. I mean, do you guys know how much you're teasing that, you know, he's meeting everybody else? Yeah, but it's kind of like, you know, certainly in the previous seasons, it's like war is on the horizon. And that's been the thing, the ticking time clock. And the ticking time clock for this season is certainly one of them is when is Jamie going to see his son? And his fear is about meeting him across enemy lines and not wanting to face him like that and you know what happens if you know we are face to face i think that's such a great dramatic pressure point for jamie's character and sam has done such a tremendous job playing that and that fear and that kind of like reluctance and wanting to you know especially it's almost like his kids well not almost it is his kids are on opposite lines as well and it is his and he has chosen, obviously, the side that we know is going to be successful in the future and bring about America as we know it and obviously provide a better future for his daughter. But it's putting him in direct conflict and across enemy lines from his son, William. So it's a great character conflict to play. And Sam's done a great job with that lead up this season. Absolutely. And and Charles Vandervaart is such a find as well. I mean, they're so, they, I mean, like, they're, they're very similar. I mean, you can really tell that, you know, that they could be, they could be father and son. Yeah, well, it's funny. It's, you know, that was such, <laughs> that was so much pressure trying to find, you know, casting, you know, James Hang on. And so much pressure. Um, and Charles, besides being the nicest person on the planet, just came in. And it's interesting. And I know no one likes Geneva. And I get it. Charles looks like a total combo of um, Jamie and Geneva. And I love that, that, you know, yeah. parentage there. And um, so I, Charles has been such a lovely addition to, this, to the Outlander family. Absolutely. And, you know, this season, so we, I mean, it's the mid-season finale. We've left it. And once again, they're, they're apart. They're an ocean apart. So we've got a long wait until part two. So um, so what's what's the um, hiatus all about? Well, I get a lot of questions about this online. And I mean, unfortunately, this is completely out of my hands. Uh, you know, that is more of a star's decision. Um, you know, and they obviously have their reasons for doing it. Um, you know, we just go in and we do what we're told. You know, we weren't told in the beginning that there would be a break, although we imagined there would be. And we're led to believe there was probably going to be, but didn't know for sure. So we certainly kind of built it that we assumed it would be after the eighth episode. All I can say is buckle your seatbelt. It'll be the worth it will be the wait will be worth it. It's um I hopefully will it, the Droughtlander will go quick. Oh yeah, Droughtlander's the killer. Like yes, it will but again, kind of more thing. time to rehash things. You know, I if you think about it in that light and builds the anticipation because but honestly, Outlander is all about anticipation. I mean, you know, certainly just it's starting season one, the seven episodes it took to get Jamie and Claire, you know, to their marriage. And, you know, the anticipation of this season with Jamie, you know, seeing his son, William. I mean, Outlander is all about anticipation. And that's what Droughtlander is about, too. Very true. Very true. And obviously with season eight is going to be the final season. Um, will be. Um, I know. I know. Um it's like obviously you guys have got a, a strike um over in the US at the moment. Is that gonna impact season eight, do you think? What's what's going on with that? Um, I think the only way it'll impact it is obviously it will be delayed like everything else. Um so 
you know, we just kind of were on hold at the moment. And, you know, we were, we're in the writers. We were in the writers room for season eight and the prequel and, um, everyone's on hold. I hope it gets resolved quickly. You know, I'd like to get back to work as with the writers and the actors and obviously our crew, you know, you don't want anyone to be out of work longer than they have to. And, um, so I hope it gets back, but it has delayed us and, and hopefully that's all it is just a delay. So hopefully we all get back soon. It's interesting that, you know, you must be in the quite a creative state of mind for it just to be like, you know, and especially because you're wrapping up season eight. I mean, how far are you knowing how things are going to end? Do you have that end game sort of mapped out? Um, I mean, we're kind of halfway through and um, I know Matt Roberts, who's our showrunner, has an idea and has kind of teased out a few things he has in mind, you know, for the end, for the end end. Um, you know, so it's certainly been talked about. It hasn't been completely figured out yet. Um, but, you know, hopefully that'll, that'll be figured out once we get back in the room. But it's hard. It's, you know, it's hard to end a series before the books end. Um, you know, uh, perfect world, we would be able to finish all the books. But, you know, Diana is still, I would have to imagine a few years, two or three years off finishing the book. I've kind of lost track. I think it takes her four years to write a book, which... Even that is astonishing when you look at the sides of these books. So it's hard to to finish it, wrap it up. But, you know, I think the one thing Diana has always been so amazing about is saying the books are hers. And they'll always be hers and you'll always have the books. It's perfect in this way because, you know, we'll have a different ending, obviously. And we'll end it where we end it. And obviously she's going to end it where she ends it. And we'll, we'll always be respectful of her and make sure she's okay with it. Thank you so much for joining us for our mid-season finale chat about Al.